My problem is, has been with the whole of this chaotic scandal uh, which has engulfed Westminster. But most of this has been a lot of nonsense. I do not consider a mildly flirtatious remark sexual harassment. Sense of proportionality has just deserted the whole thing. People putting in complaints 15 years later that they may have been lightly touched. It is ridiculous. I mean, normally that would just make me laugh. We're already, as a, as a society, at a stage where people are dubious about putting an arm round a distressed child because they feel it might be misinterpreted. Are we really going to get to the stage where no man can make a flirtatious comment, can make a light touch, can give a pat of encouragement, can give a touch of comfort, whatever it might be, where human beings feel they have to stand off from each other? If so, that's not some new age of enlightenment. That's a dark age. Let me ask you this. What physical, personal compliment could I pay you that wouldn't offend you? Do you know what? You and me both know the difference between flirting and harassment. And that's the thing. Most no, men... Answer my question no, for no, a moment. Because what in, in other words, if I were to say to you now, yeah. your hair looks lovely, yeah. or you've, I, like, I like what you're wearing, yeah. would you consider that in this new environment to be offensive? I wouldn't. But it doesn't matter about that, because it's not about me as an it, individual. It doesn't matter. I think it does no, matter. No, let me talk... Let me, a let lot me of explain. people are confused now. Yeah. Not so a, let me explain. Not, but let me just say this. Let me phrase the question correctly. They're not confused about rape or sexual assault mm. or even aggressive... Oh, they are. Well, OK, let, let's just assume... And that's most, part of the problem. Let's assume most people, in my experience, know what rape is and they know what sexual assault mm. is. And but they, they know, don't, and, and that's a huge assumption that you're making, and that is part of this same problem. Like, the only point when people take rape seriously is when we have conversations like this, and suddenly it's taken really seriously. The conviction rate for rape is 6%, because when we do talk about rape, we still talk about it as something that women have to prevent from happening to themselves. And this is the thing about sexual harassment, that it's not just a touch or a flirt or a text message. It's all of it. We make it acceptable to do the stuff but at the other end of the scale, and all of these right, things affect it. women's confidence, I get it. and they all affect women's freedom. Freedom. I get it. But I would also say, from my personal experience talking to women in the last two weeks, a lot of women don't share the view that a hand on a knee, mm. albeit completely inappropriate mm. perhaps, after a couple of drinks at lunchtime or a clumsy pass by a married politician, mm. they don't see that as anywhere near the same level of offence right. as sexual assault, rape and so on. And so I'm mainly asking, really, you know, I think a lot of people think it's, this is a good debate to be having. Yeah. But where is the line to be drawn? But that's the thing. It's not about... Like, why do we have to draw lines? We know that... Because otherwise people don't know where the line that's, is. But it's and not don't... true. Like, yeah, men is, don't, harass, true. Men don't harass people who can fire them. And that's because very few women are in positions of authority over men. This is actually about power. power and if some power. women don't want to report, that's fine. Nobody's insisting okay. that they should. Yeah. Nobody's telling us she has to. Well, let me ask, let me ask Anne. Let me ask Anne Whittaker. Anne, in all your always. time in Parliament, were you ever sexually harassed? Absolutely not. Uh, and I think for the very obvious reason that, uh, you know, nobody would have expected to make very much progress if they'd tried. But <laughs> honestly, this is not what Westminster is like. I do not recognise the description of a, <clears throat> of a toxic atmosphere at Westminster as the one that for 23 years I observed close up. Uh, and I'm really tired of being told, you know, that, that women are being suppressed when it takes them years to report something, when they could report it on the spot time. Some now, of these on, women did report on. it and it was no, dismissed, so, you had so a it's long simply not just true. Now, now, just hang on. What we're actually getting at the moment is reports coming in via third parties where the women ha don't even want to complain. Do you wonder why, Anne, and when your reaction is like this? And third parties they should have done. It is pathetic. It is pathetic. No, it's very courageous when people like you will give them that treatment. Actually, standing up to your harassers and standing up to people like you who belittle people who is it, people's experiences, actually, it's the bravest thing. Of course, and this doesn't just apply to women. Uh, you know, we're talking as if women are the only victims. Men also uh, may have women grievances, are five which times they want more to make likely, according to but, NS. But, oh, Sophie, do let somebody finish, for goodness sake. I'm just, uh, I'm they, just giving you the facts. <clears throat> which they want to make known. But what I believe is that there should be proportionality. 
That is the word that I've been using ever since this nonsense started. There is proportionality. What is serious should always be taken seriously. What is trivial isn't worth wasting the time on. Okay. And most of this stuff, yeah. what even the women themselves don't want to complain, yeah. is trivial. Congratulations. Work so hard, forgot how to vacation.